Now, Moore and others like him believe that a mass exodus would leave room to get their kids back in the doors of Roswell High, but what sounds good in theory may not always be reality. This door leads into the apartment of Lorraine Grant. As you can see, these are the markings where the police beat in the door. They went inside, took boxes of evidence. Neighbors heard the commotion all the way from downstairs. Now, Kane says he's a former businessman with a strength for numbers and a plan for the economy, but he personally admits that foreign policy isn't his strong suit. We're digging even further into the cheating scandal, and we found out from investigators not only did parents know that cheating was going on inside these doors, but they were trying to get their kids into the classroom. There were many vocal people tonight, Brandon, at the Atlanta School Board meeting, but none were quite as vocal as Katim Shearer Eel. The eight-year school board veteran was not afraid to bring forward tough questions and even tears in his response to the governor's report about the Atlanta public school cheating scandal. Now today I went into this store as an undercover consumer and I was told that bath salts aren't sold in this store. Brian McCullough's son is in the hospital tonight, recovering from a bad reaction to the bath salts he purchased and snorted outside Smoke 911 in Roswell. But the salts were supposed to be pulled from shelves. Tonight, McCullough wants answers. Armed with community support that filled up two large U-Hauls, we gave them this camera so they could chronicle their experiences. Just last month, a man approached a five-year-old girl in this neighborhood. Now, he quickly drove off when the mother stepped in. And I want to promise him that if he will surrender unarmed, that he will not be harmed in any form or fashion. After a long day of police negotiations, it was GBI Director Vernon Keenan's promise of a live television surrender that coaxed cop killer Jamie Hood out of an apartment filled with his hostages. We were there from the beginning. Right outside uh, Danielsville Road. Now, as you can see, the road is blocked off currently with Athens Clark County. Gathering police. details as they came goal in. Is the safe release of the eight persons involved and the safe surrender of Jamie Hood. Leading up to Keenan's promise. Free of harm. That was a pledge that he made made on behalf of himself and Chief Jack Lumpkin of the athens Clark County Police that led to this moment. Cameras rolled as we watched these hostages hesitate, leaving the apartment hands up. Hood is a third man out of the door. Keenan told us Hood called a live surrender his, quote, insurance policy, fearing he would be shot unless people were watching. People, including his family. A block away, we were with his sisters as they watched the events unfold. Tension clearly written on their faces. The night was also tense for Hood's hostages. Some left the police station avoiding our questions and our cameras. But one hostage, Clinton Ryden, was outspoken, calling Hood a good guy, but he had to get even. He did it for a change for the law enforcement. The law enforcement killed his brother back in the day, and he said he just wanted to show them how it feel to lose one. Keenan says Hood's arrest will only help the athens Clark County Police cope with the loss of one of their own. The citizens of this county can move on with their lives and the athens Clark County Police Department can grieve the loss of their fallen officer and their uh, other officer that was severely injured. In Athens, Addie Hampton, UGA News Source. Brian McCullough's son is in the hospital tonight, recovering from a bad reaction to the bath salts he purchased and snorted outside Smoke 911 in Roswell. But the salts were supposed to be pulled from shelves. Tonight, McCullough wants answers. It's terrible. It's a terrible, terrible drug, and it's, it's ruining the communities. Brian McCullough is talking about bath salts, a highly addictive, dangerous substance seen here in a recent series of Channel 2 Action News investigations about the product. Georgia lawmakers banned their sale after we reported on it. He says his son recently became addicted to the salts. He would get violent. He would, uh, he would be hearing voices. Um, he would try and pick fights with me. According to this police report we obtained, McCullough and his wife followed their son from their home to Smoke 911 on Holcomb Bridge Road and witnessed him snorting bath salts outside the store. Brian went up there and when he came out he had bath salts and no money on him. Now experts say that these salts mimic the effects of cocaine and are very dangerous. So dangerous in fact the Georgia General Assembly banned the selling of these salts earlier this year. Now today I went into this store as an undercover consumer and I was told that bath salts aren't sold in this store. 
back up? You don't do back up anymore? No. Not until we get reformulation. Growing problem seem to be getting more and more calls in the last few months. Georgia Poison Control Director Gaylord Lopez told me many stores are still selling bath salts despite a ban. These stores are not going to be advertising them. It's, it's usually a word of mouth uh, kind of deal. I think they should be shut down. I think they should be prosecuted. Now, Smoke 911's manager is adamant that no salts were sold, and Roswell Police confirmed that the matter is being investigated. Well, there were many vocal people tonight, Brandon, at the Atlanta School Board meeting, but none were quite as vocal as Katim Shearer Eel. The eight-year school board veteran was not afraid to bring forward tough questions and even tears in his response to the governor's report about the Atlanta public school cheating scandal. I failed to protect thousands of children. <laughs> children who come from homes like mine. Atlanta School Board member Katim Eel resigned tonight in front of a packed house at the Atlanta School Board meeting. He passionately expressed his hurt and disbelief in light of the cheating scandal that's rocked the Atlanta public school system, saying the city is facing a genuine crisis of character. When people waved the flag and said, look, we have a problem, there's something rotten in Denmark, it was those very people who were retaliated against, and I'm just one of many victims in this city. He was unapologetic, bringing up the controversial topic of race and its connection to the scandal affecting over 40,000 students and the last decade. Why was this cheating scandal so exclusively pronounced for some children and not others? Splitting sharply along racial lines and equal in its mistreatment of the poor and disenfranchised. Yet Eel is not leaving his post without a plan already in the works. He'll be heading to Newark, New Jersey to help the city's school distribute the $100 million donation from Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg. After the meeting, our team couldn't help but ask Eel the question on all our minds. As he leaves in the middle of what he calls a crisis. Are you giving up on the kids so of Atlanta? I don't think so. I, I asked you to talk to the kids in my neighborhood and you asked them if ever on one day that I give up on them. Eel says he's a victim, along with those kids in his neighborhood. He says he was supposed to be enforcing accountability, but he was told it was better not to step in. Reporting from the Satellite News Center, Addie Hampton, Channel 2 Action News. Four officers face charges tonight, accused of smuggling contraband items to inmates. I went to Fulton County Courthouse to see if they wanted to respond to serious allegations. Akil Scott is claiming his innocence, leaving the courtroom this evening. Not guilty. That's all I'm saying. Why did now please get the cameras out of my face. He's one of four officers arrested Thursday for smuggling drugs, cell phones, and other illegal contraband into the Fulton County Jail. Did you take money to supply drugs to the jail? No. Sheriff's Deputy Marvy Dingle says he's innocent, but he and Detention Officer Brian Anthony are charged with accepting payments from undercover agents posing as drug dealers outside the jail. Anthony said nothing to us about allegations that he arranged to have four other men pose as officers to help protect what they believe to be real cocaine deals outside the jail. This is only the beginning. We're going to continue until we uh, drive all the corrupt individuals in the sheriff's office out. This promise from Sheriff Ted Jackson comes on the heels of an extensive year-long federal investigation. We did some digging ourselves and found in the first half of this year, they've confiscated 21 cell phones, nine weapons, eight prescription pill cases, and there have been 11 incidents involving drugs. Jackson vows that they're not resting until corruption in the jail is stopped. Some of these uh, employees are conflicted. They don't know what side of the bars they belong on, so we're going to help them make that decision. Each man pled not guilty to the serious charges against them. They're each out this evening on $25,000 bond. People don't see me as uh, a black guy running for president. They see somebody that has a message that resonates with them. Georgia's own Herman Cain has gained momentum in recent weeks in the Republican race for the White House. The Tea Party favorite says he knew he'd go up in polls, but he never expected to tie Sarah Palin for second in Iowa, just behind Mitt Romney. In a Channel 2 exclusive interview, Kane told us he takes issue with those who call the Tea Party racist. Most people have gotten past color, and they see they're looking for content and character. 
Kane is the fair tax candidate and stands on a platform of common sense principles. The former WSB radio talk show host has been a character on the campaign trail, drawing standing room only crowds. But Washington insiders say Kane is a long shot, a quote, entertainment candidate. If they take a shot at me, I'm just going to simply say, why don't you come and travel with me for a day? Now, Kane says he's a former businessman with a strength for numbers and a plan for the economy, but he personally admits that foreign policy isn't his strong suit. That is more about every situation we are in around the world that I don't know than I do know. And some people don't like the fact that I'm honest. I think he's going to go much further in this race than people think. Insider Advantage CEO and political analyst Matt Towney. People don't see a black man running as a Republican. They see a very persuasive speaker, and then they may step back and say, well, there's an added benefit that he's African American, and that's an expansion of the party. With Romney officially entering the race for the White House, the biggest supporters of this grassroots candidate hope Kane will be able. In Stockbridge, Addie Hampton, Channel 2 Action News. Live, local, late breaking. This is Channel 2 Action News at 6 p.m. Coverage you can count on. Developing right now in Clayton County, roads are shut down and buildings evacuated as a warehouse fire burns out of control. Good evening, I'm Addie Hampton. And I'm Sana Sayani. Police took 10 people out of a home in handcuffs today after a bizarre incident that ended with a SWAT standoff. Channel 2's Tyra Baku is live in the newsroom with why the SWAT team was called in. Tyra? A North Fulton family is fighting their homeowners association over a military flag. John and Rosanna Klein hung this marine flag in their front window of their Milton home. They say the flag honors their son who was serving in the Marine Corps. But their HOA doesn't like the way the flag is being displayed and told them they are in violation of subdivision standards. Unless you're a military family, unless you've been what we've been through, you don't have a lot of latitude to accuse us of something like that. The family of a man accused for hitting an Atlanta police officer is asking him to surrender. Police say Khalif Edwards struck Officer Pat Appion with his car and ran him over. It happened last Thursday as officers tried to arrest Edwards. Five generations of the Edwards family gathered this weekend to make a public plea. Please contact us and come home. We will get you a place to try somebody to help you now because we don't want nothing to go down. Officer Appion remains in serious condition at Grady Memorial Hospital. Members of Georgia's Hispanic community are gearing up to protest the effects of HB 87's immigration bill. Channel 2's Roshni Chokshi tells us that business owners have a new way to show how this legislation would affect the community. We checked with athens Clark County Police and officials have found a missing woman. 30-year-old Marion Bailey's boyfriend reported her missing Sunday. He told police someone sent him messages indicating she may be in danger. Police are not saying where they found Bailey. Now you want to take one more look at the hot forecast. Channel 2's Will Langston is in Severe Weather Center 2 with what to expect throughout the evening. Will? That's right, Addie. We hope you have a great end of the week and a great weekend. Addie? Thanks, Will, and thank you for counting on Channel 2 Action News. We'll see you the next time news breaks, and again tonight on the Channel 2 Action News Night Beat at 11. And remember, we're always on at WSBTV.com. Have a good evening.